I'm going to make an RC racing boat at home, capable of reaching high speeds. Some parts will be 3D printed, but most of the boat will be built with really cheap materials. Let's start with the design of the boat. I used Fusion 360. This software allowed me to make an accurate 3D model and then make two-dimensional projections of the pieces. We can then export this to print it. This is really useful to use as templates. I printed the plans using several sheets, but it's a lot better to order a big print. Plans can be found in the description of this video. The idea now is to transfer these shapes to the material I'll use to build the boat. I'm going to use foam board. This is very cheap and easy to work with. This material is commonly used to build RC airplanes too. Some videos about that coming soon. After cutting all the pieces, I started measuring the distances to place the ribs and start gluing the panels together. It's a good idea to identify the panels to make it easier at the moment of the build. This is a very important step because we start to place the first pieces. I recommend using hot glue, epoxy or universal glue. Place the panels one by one and try not to leave much gap between them. After the glue has hardened, we can take a look at the first results. To get better unions between the panels, it's recommended to cut the edges in a certain angle. Since we have to force the panels into a small curvature, I use some tape to hold them while the glue is drying out. I'm really satisfied with the shape the boat got. It's very accurate to the shape I designed in the 3D software. I'll use waterproof silicone to cover the gaps between the panels. This is a very common product in hardware stores. Now I'll put the last rib. Our boat hull is almost ready, but we still have so much work to do. I made a hole where the main shaft is going to go through. And that takes us to the next task, which is to place the motor. But first, let's put more silicone throughout the boat. I'm going to wear gloves, because this is not so nice to have all over my hands. I'll cover each little gap or hole to minimize the possibility of water getting inside. I'll start making the motor space. I'll use a plywood sheet 5mm thick because it is stronger to withstand the motor vibrations and other forces. I'll measure the right placement of the motor to make all the holes needed to screw it. This motor is courtesy of rcmoment.com. I'll leave a link in the description with all the products I'm using and also secondary options. After opening all the holes, we screw the motor and we're done with it. I put additional wood plates to glue it better. Then I applied a coat of white paint. That will make it shinier. But now it's time to solder some connectors in the ESC. This ESC is capable of 125 amps. To make the connectors, I'll use this aluminum tube since I don't have the proper connectors to connect the ESC and the motor. Then I realized that soldering aluminum with a regular method is impossible, so I use a hammer to compress the tubes with the wires. It's very important to use isolation so they don't make contact with each other while the motor is working. I have to solder this XT60 connector and we are ready. It's time to test this motor for the first time. Then I glue the motor in its permanent position and I continue placing a few more details. A very important part is the water cooling system to keep the motor and ESC working without a problem. 
For that, I will use some pipes to distribute water. I use some balsa wood to make the rudder, but I'll 3D print it later on. Now let's talk about something important, the universal joint between the motor and the propeller shafts. It's a good idea to use thread lock to prevent the nut from falling out due to the high RPM when the boat is racing. To complete the water pickup and coolant system, I'll place this aluminum tube. Here you can see the first test in the bathtub. The boat has a lot of thrust. Some water was getting inside, but it was easy to solve. Then I was placing these tabs so I can put the deck and also they will prevent some water coming in from the top. Then it was time for the rudder system. In this case, very rudimentary, but it will get updated later on. Here I'm just using two balsa wood sticks that will support the rotor shaft. And naturally, we have to add a servo to control it. And we have completed the rotor system. And that concludes all the basic work necessary to make the boat work. And without doing any further work, we have to test it first in the real life. The first time I went out to test this boat, I had high expectations, but I knew I will find something I need to improve or modify. During this test, I found several problems. The first and bigger one is the propeller being too close to the surface, so it doesn't work properly because some air gets in it and it loses a lot of efficiency. With the throttle stick to max, I was getting about half speed from what it was supposed to be going, so it was time to go back to the design. The paint coat wasn't very helpful, since this foam board has some paper-like layers that dissolve after a long exposure to water. So I continued with the main modification, which is lowering the propeller shaft a bit more. I'm afraid of lowering it too much, because it can cause some problems of instability. But we have to test it. I also bent the aluminum tube so it picks the water instead of being the exhaust of hot water. Another important change I did was to cover the hull with fiberglass. That way it will be completely waterproof and it also gives it rigidity and durability. It is similar to the making of a surfboard. This is a tedious process, but it's worth it. I have to pour resin throughout the surface. This will make a strong composite. I'll let it dry for about a day and then send off the imperfections. The next day, I apply a second layer. This is a thinner one. I also did some modifications to the water cooling system. I also made a little top deck design to accommodate the receiver and a better placement of the antennas. So it was time to go and test it for the second time. This time I'm using a 3D printed router. It is behaving a lot better, but taking it to the max throttle makes it very unstable. And then this happened. So once again, we have to go back to the design. So I designed the stabilizers and printed them to be placed at the rear of the boat. 
I also added some guides, if I can call them like that, to add extract stabilization. You better make sure all of this is well aligned. Then, to protect the receiver from any water going in and damaging the electronics, I took this measure to prevent that. Especially if the boat rolls over like the last time. After that, we were ready for the third attempt. I hope this time it works. It is not all perfect, but it is working a lot better. If the rear stabilizers or fins are not aligned, you will notice that it will turn without any command. That's why they must be trimmed well. I also believe that the position of the rudder is making problems there. But also another problem happened. Back to the design table. This time I designed some 3D rig for the whole rudder system one to hold the servo in place and the other to hold the rudder in the middle of the boat exactly behind the propeller. That way we can direct the thrust. The printing of these two pieces took me about three hours. I have put a bearing so the rudder can rotate freely. I also changed the aluminum connectors for the proper banana connectors since it was giving me some problems before. All is left is to put these things in place and go test it the fourth time. Now I'm very happy with these results, as you can see it can go really fast. The 3D file for Fusion 360 and the STL files from this project as well as the PDF plans are in the description of the video. If you enjoyed this video, you know what to do. I'll see you in the next project.